they argue that, well, yes, the probability of getting one or all of these parameters just right is infinitesimally small, but what if you had a nearly infinite number of universes? Then, the pro then yes, the, uh, the probability in our, um, if you have an infinite number of universes, then you could conceive that the combination of factors that would be life-friendly would have to arise in one of those universes just by chance, okay? And, that we, and then we just happen to be the lucky ones. Um, but there's, there's a twofold, or there's a problem with that and there's two aspects to it. And that is that if you just have all these other universes, uh, then the mere existence of those universes doesn't, and, and, they don't, and they're not interacting causally with our universe, then the mere existence of other universes does nothing to explain whatever process it was that set the probabilities in this universe, because there's no interaction. So in virtue of that, multiverse proponents have, have uh, suggested that there are kind of universe generating mechanisms that are, um, that, that produce all the different universes, including our own, so they can portray our universe as a kind of lucky winner in a great cosmic lottery. But that's where the ultimate rub comes in, because it turns out that, that for those universe generating mechanisms, whether they're based on something called string theory or inflationary cosmology, for those universe generating mechanisms to produce new universes, even in theory, to plausibly generate new universes, those universe generating mechanisms themselves have to be exquisitely finely tuned. So they, there's unexplained prior fine tuning in the multiverse hypothesis. So it takes you right back to where you started. And given what we know, what we mean by fine tuning is an ensemble of improbable parameters that work together to accomplish a, a significant outcome or function. And when we see fine tuning in our experience, whether we're talking about a finely tuned French recipe or a finely tuned internal combustion engine or a finely tuned radio dial or any finely tuned system, those systems always result from a mind, from a prior intelligence. So even if the multiverse hypothesis is, is correct, it only underscores the need for prior fine tuning, which takes you right back to the need for intelligent design. And so I think either way you go, you have evidence of intelligent either design. Way. Well, well, God is also an unobservable in the same way that the other universes are unobservable. But the point is that, that, um, that the multiverse doesn't get n rid of the need for an intelligent agent to explain the fine tuning, nor is it a simpler explanation than the theistic explanation. Um, it turns out that if you think of those two different uh, universe generating mechanisms that the materialists have had to propose to explain the fine tuning, w when you posit those mechanisms, they themselves require belief in all kinds of unobservable entities, um, extra dimensions of space in string theory, uh, unobservable strings in string theory, a force called an inflaton field, etc. And so you end up multiplying explanatory entities in the materialistic multiverse explanation, whereas in the theistic explanation, you can explain the same data more simply by reference to one single explanatory entity, namely a transcendent intelligence. So the theistic explanation passes the Occam's razor test much more nicely than the materialistic one does. No question. Plus so, you're, you're invoking a gabillion other universes, which is fantastically extravagant as part of your explanatory framework. 